Here's some notes on cerebrospinal fluid analysis or CSF analysis. We're going to break down the diagnoses shown here, meningitis, tuberculosis, viral meningitis, Guillain-Barre, according to the white blood cell count, the glucose count, and the protein count. And down here you can see just samples of CSF as you might collect them in the clinic. So first, the normal values. Normally you have white blood cells that are 0 to 5, glucose that's 40 to 70, and protein that's less than 40. In bacterial meningitis, you have a strong immune reaction. So I like to think that there's a lot of white blood cells that appear over 1,000 in your sample. But bacteria eat glucose, right? They love glucose and that's how they grow. So you'll, your glucose levels are going to be low, below 40. And bacteria also produce a lot of protein. So you'll have high proteins here as well. Tuberculosis is a bacteria, but it's a slow growing, fastidious growing organism. So the white blood count will still be elevated, but it won't be nearly as high as in like meningococcus, for instance. Your glucose will still be low because tuberculosis still eats a lot of glucose and your protein levels are, uh, they range. They could be 100 to 500 here. Viral meningitis, your white blood cell count is high, not nearly as high as in bacterial meningitis. Viruses don't eat glucose nearly as much as bacteria do. So your glucose levels are normal. Your protein levels are elevated, maybe, but not nearly as high as in bacterial meningitis. Lastly, Guillain-Barre syndrome, you might remember this is an autoimmune disease uh, where you have uh, antibody production in the cerebral spinal fluid. Your white blood cell count is normal, your glucose count is normal, but your protein, um, which is like your antibodies that are being produced, is very, very high.